On August 28, 2008, a guy with a pizza boy uniform and a mask walks into a bank and starts shouting, I have a collar bomb around my neck. If anybody tries to leave the bank, we all are gonna die. The security asks him, what do you want? He says, $1 million in cash. They start to give them money, but in the meanwhile, the cops arrive at the scene and he shouts again and says, we are all gonna die. What happened afterward? Well, I will tell you the whole story, so watch the video till the end, so don't miss out on any important details. On the morning of that day, Jeffrey arrived at work as normal. He was a pizza delivery boy, and by 2 p.m., he had already done several deliveries just like normal. At around 2.30 p.m., he received a call requesting a pizza to be delivered at some TV transmission tower. He got a shady feeling about the address where the pizza was to be delivered, and he told the owner about it, but the owner told him to do his job since he had also joined a week ago. He paid no attention to the address and decided to deliver the pizza, but little did he know that he was going to be delivering his last pizza. He arrives at the location, and just when he rings the bell at the door, some people grab him and take him inside. Two men have held him at gunpoint, and the other guy is putting something around his neck and also making him wear a mask. He isn't moving because the guys with the guns have made it clear that if he does anything stupid, he will be killed. Once the guy was finished putting something on his neck, they started to explain to him the task that he was supposed to do for them. They told him to go to this bank which is nearby and take one million dollars from them in cash, otherwise they were going to kill him right here. His only chance for survival was that he did this task correctly because if he somehow messed up, they would just end up blowing him. They told him that they would be out somewhere outside, and if they sensed something fishy going around, they would pull the trigger and kill him. So he had no other choice but to go through with this. At around 3.30 to 3.45, Jeffrey came running inside the bank and started shouting, I have a collar bomb around my neck. If anybody tries to leave the bank, we all are gonna die. Everyone starts panicking, and why wouldn't they? Some people were with their kids. The security guard started coming near him and asked, what is it that you want? He replies to the guards and says, one million dollars in cash. They start to take out the money so that they can give him. In the meanwhile, the police arrive at the place. They were called there by the security guards and due to the police station being so close to the bank, they arrived there within minutes. When the police enter, Jeffrey starts shouting, we are all gonna die. Everybody starts panicking even more and the police calm everyone down, including Jeffrey. The police start to ask Jeffrey some questions. The first question was, are you wired? He replied in a panicking voice and said, I don't know. He also told them the story of how he ended up there. It was the exact story that I told you led to this point. He then said, please just give me the money so that I can go and nobody including myself gets killed. Everyone in the bank started to shout at the cops and told them they should let him go. The police concluded that letting Jeffrey go was the right thing to do. They gave him the cash and he went away from there. As soon as the police went away, they started calling more forces and told them to follow Jeffrey in a secretive way. Jeffrey was walking in a very panicky way, and the police could tell that since they were following him from behind without Jeffrey noticing them. Jeffrey arrived at the TV transmission tower, and so did the police. The TV transmission tower had many trees and greenery around it, and that is where the police were hiding. The plan was simple. Wait for them to come out because they don't know what waits for them inside. The police had surrounded the TV transmission tower, waiting for someone to come out. 
About 10 minutes later, a huge blast happens on the first floor, and all the cops charge straight in there. And what they found is shocking. They found the body of a guy without his head fully burned, and they also found the head of the body at some distance with the face fully burned. They checked the whole building, and no one was there. Not even a single clue was found beside a guy who was beheaded and his body wearing a pizza delivery man's uniform. The police sent the body and the head for examination and went straight to the pizza shop, the name of which was barely visible on the shirt. But they figured it out and went in there to ask about the pizza delivery. They arrived at the place and started to ask the owner about it. The owner immediately said that the delivery was to be done by Jeffrey, and for some reason he hasn't returned yet. They told him about the whole incident, and the owner broke down in tears and started to tell the police that he had told him that this address looked very shady, and he made him go there anyway. The police questioned him about Jeffrey, and the owner said that he was a good guy and only joined the pizza shop about a week ago. The police got out of there and also told the owner to not leave the town until the investigation of this case was over. A few days went by and the reports from the examination of the body came back and the results shocked everyone who was working on the case. The reports said that the body was beheaded a very long time ago and the face was erased a long time ago. The police who thought that the body that they found there was Jeffrey's suddenly started to think that they had been tricked into something. Things got even crazier when the police discovered a CCTV camera footage from afar and saw that two parachutes were visible in the sky from the direction of the TV transmission tower at the same time when the blast had happened. The police went to the pizza shop owner to look for some records of Jeffrey, if that even was his name, but they found nothing. The pizza shop owner said to the cops, I'm an old man, I found him to be a good guy, and I hired him. The police were shocked at how perfectly this crime was committed. He first worked in a pizza shop for a week, and that too, the pizza shop of an old guy who he knew wouldn't care for his ID. Then he went inside the bank with a mask and played the victim in front of the police, and then made the police give him the money that he required, went back to this place knowing that the police were going to follow him there. When the blast happened, he knew everyone would go inside, and in the meanwhile, he escaped with a parachute with his partner. Made the police think that he was the victim here and distracted them for about four days. The police tried their best after that and even got a drawing of his face from the old man who owned the pizza shop, but it was pointless. He was long gone, and the pizza delivery man who robbed the bank was never found. If you love watching the stories that I tell on this channel, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also send me your stories via email if you have one, and if I find them worth sharing, I'll share them in my next video and will also credit you. Thanks for watching.